Welcome to our second video on how to correct scoliosis using functional exercises. The first video discussed um, the similar sort of concept but with the opposite type scoliosis. So this is a person viewed from behind. If your spine looks like this, if your upper back is bent slightly to the right and there's a curve into your lower back like this, this is the one for you. If your spine from behind looks opposite to this, then please watch the other video. I'm just going to run you through what we're seeing here and then we'll, uh, we'll get cracking. So, with a curve here, which is side bent to the right, it also rotates to the left. That's the way the spine moves, it moves in coupled movements. And so we want to lengthen this side and then derotate this upper back. And then with the lower back, it's side bent to the left and it's rotated to the right, side bent left, rotated right. And we want to lengthen this side and derotate here. After we've done that, we're looking at strengthening these lengthened weakened muscles on the left here and strengthening these lengthen and weak muscles on the right there. But also we need to strengthen the rotatory muscles up here and rotatory muscles down here. So if we look at this, this is uh, my, the view of me from behind, it's like this. I want to lengthen this side. How would I do that? I just lift this hand up above my head and that's going to lengthen that curve. And so one thing we like to do is take the hand, and my hand goes off the top of the picture here, we take the hand up and over and just hold on to a wall. So put a bit of support there. Now as this is a stretch, you want to do this for about 15 to 30 seconds and hold that movement. And secondly, we want to derotate this side. So if I'm leaning to the left, I'll also want to rotate to the right. So this, this is twisted round to the left, so I want to twist it back to the right. And the way we're going to do that is simply just twist and put the hand on the wall there. So it looks like this, I'm just twisting, derotating my upper back and putting the hand onto the wall. Now we can combine those two movements I have the twist, so my hands onto the wall, I'm derotating this upper back and just leaning to the left like that. And that's combine the two movements. Now to make this really effective, you actually add a third movement in because the spine works in three ways. It works going forwards and backwards, it works leaning left and right and also into rotation. And so what we've got here is we've got two of those, we've derotated and we've side bent and now if we just put a tiny little movement into the upper back, we're going to get some really nice reactions through here that's going to affect the muscles and the ligaments and the proprioceptors and make that change really quick as opposed to just holding it in a static stretch. Okay, I'm going to do that from the other side. So my hands here are just twisting. You can probably see how that's actually uh, uh, twisting here. This, imagine this stuff on my t-shirt, these are my still muscles, so it's actually twisting these as well. Just leaning here and rotating and then going up and back, up and back. Okay, and for the lower back, well, what we need to do is, you can sort of make, kind of make sense, if we put something underneath this leg, so we lift up uh, the hip, so we stand on the book, and then this, this uh, lower part of your back is actually rotated like this. And so if, we, if this is your sacrum, this is the bone here, and this is the L5, it's rotated like that. So we want to take the, uh, the sacrum and move it forwards like this. So we're rotating from below. So we take a step forward with our left leg and then we put our right leg on something. And so that's going to just look a little bit like this. So left foot forward and then the right leg on something to correct the back. Now it's a good idea to actually use this position in the hips whilst doing the movements above. So left foot forward, right foot on a step and then hold some of these positions here. So we're derotating the upper back and going forwards and backwards whilst holding that movement, sorry, holding that position into the lower back. Okay, that's the lengthening side of things. So that's the lengthening here, here, derotate, derotate. But now we want to look at the strengthening. So the strengthening, we need to get these muscles on this side working a little bit and these muscles on this side. So how are we going to get these muscles to pull like this? A simple way is to put a weight in this hand and then just lean up and that is going to get these muscles to really work hard whilst uh, lengthening this side as well. Now you can use weights for this, 5, 10 pounds, uh, 15 pound weights, whatever the osteopathic therapist who's treating you recommends and whatever feels comfortable. Now in the absence of weights you can just put water in a, in a water bottle like this, so it's pretty simple. I'm just going to put the weight into the right hand here and lean up and above and I'm going to do this for sets and the sets of 10, 
15, 20, again, whatever your osteopathic therapist says, or you can do it for time. You can do a fast movements for 30 seconds or slower movements for 30 seconds. The variables there are quite numerous with time and weight and repetitions. But you've got to find something that works for you to get the right chain reaction and the right uh, reaction from these muscles here. Okay, so then we need to think about derotating. So we're side bent to the, uh, this is the, the, the spine here. So you're side bent this way, twist a little bit this way. So we actually want to rotate the opposite way. We're going to take this spine and we're going to rotate it this way like this. Okay, so the way we're going to do that with resistance is to take an elastic band, put it on our hand and just push against it. So I've got one here, just tied, just tied to, a, um, to a door frame. And I'm going to pre-position my feet in that uh, right foot uh, up on a book, left foot forward, and then I'm just pushing forward from here. So I'm just derotating that upper back. And then I want to, I can combine these two movements by putting the weight in my hand, and I push up and rotate at the same time. And you'll feel this is really nice derotation of the spine, it's like a nice corkscrew effect. So I'm using the muscles here that are going to help correct the upper back. I'm using the muscles along here, the uh, thoracic, sort of erector spiny muscles, really getting them to work to correct the upper back. Now for the lower back, we want to do the, uh, a similar thing, but it's from below. Okay, so with this lower back, I just want to be clear what we're talking about here. If this is the lower back and this is the sacrum, the lower back is twisted slightly to the right. So it's a right curve here. So side bent left, twisted to the right. And if we were to step forward with that right foot, it would actually make the curve worse. So that's how we're going to start with this lower back um, exercise. But then we step backwards and you can see what happens. It's actually derotating that lumbar curve from below by stepping backwards. So we're putting some resistance here. This would be the pelvis. We're putting some resistance here and against it, and we strengthen the muscles that pull that leg backwards. And then starting with the right foot uh, down is actually making the sort of side bending here just a little bit worse, but then ending up with the right foot up, and the left foot down is correcting that curve as best as can. So now we want to work on derotating the lower back and strengthening the, uh, the right side of the lower back. Okay. So we know that having our left leg forward and our right leg back up on something is the correct position to end up in. So what I'm going to do here is actually put two, uh, a slightly higher block on the back foot than the front foot. And as I take a step forward with my right foot, I'm going to make this lower back slightly, slightly worse, increase that curve. But this is good because that switches on the muscles and gets them ready for when I step back and up onto something, I'm having to lift my leg up. Now putting a weight onto the, the lower leg here, actually giving something for the foot to uh, pull up against is also a good idea. But what I'm using here is I'm using some resistance to resist the rotation. So this one's mainly for rotation, and I'm using gravity to actually lift up against. But putting a weight on this ankle as well to pull it down uh, is, a, is a good idea. And so what I'm doing is I'm going from my right foot forward, my left foot on a book, stepping backwards to my right foot on two books and my left foot stays still. And that is derotating that lower back, strengthening the muscles that do that and strengthening the muscles that lift up that hip. So really correcting that lower lumbar curve. Okay, so you can do the uh, lower leg correction and the upper arm correction at the same time. I'd recommend that would be kind of a, a later stage thing. Let's break it down into stretching first, stretching the upper back, uh, holding those positions, putting a little bit of movement in, and then stretching the lower back or keeping the lower back um, pre-positioned while stretching the upper back. That's sorry, a better way of doing it. So you keep the lower back pre-positioned while stretching the upper back. And then when it comes to the stretch, uh, strengthening side of things with the actual weights, you do that separately. You do the upper back first, then the lower back until you're very coordinated and used to the movements, then you can do both at the same time. Okay, I hope that helps.